Hi all, Sons from Eagle Dynamics, and welcome back to Mozzie Monday, where today we will explore the setup and employment of weapons. Ok, let's start with the machine guns and cannons. Again, as with all things Mosquito, the triple pressure gauge will need to read a minimum of 200 pounds per square inch for them to function correctly. If you receive combat damage during a sortie that reduces the pneumatic pressure below that value, your cannons and machine guns will potentially stop working. Now we open the gun master switch cover, and the master switch beneath needs to be set to the down position. Both your guns and cannons are now live. Right, so now we need to activate the reflector gun sight with the switch on junction box B. If you are flying in 2D, your viewpoint will change to a more centred position. Your cannons are fired using the forefinger trigger, and your machine guns via the thumb operator trigger. You will obviously have those bound to your HOTAS. I have my machine guns bound to the first detent of my warthog trigger and the cannons assigned to the second detent, but that's just a personal preference. Right, let's pull all of that together in a strafing run. You will need to apply a little nose down trim as you run in on target. Now we will set up the aircraft for a bombing run. If you forget the steps you can always refer to your kneeboard as a reminder. This kneeboard will soon be available and contains the information within the pilot's notes upon which our Mosquito is based. Your bomb control and selector switches are located beneath the Perspex cover to the right on the centre console. To access them you need to press your left mouse button over the release catch. The top row of switches activates the release mechanism for the wing mounted bombs. Switch 1 activates the port or left wing release and switch 2 the starboard or right wing release. When both switches are down, all wing carried ordnance is released together. The middle row of switches activates the release mechanism for the bay mounted bombs. Switch 3 activates the port or left bomb release and switch 4 the starboard or right bomb release. When both switches are down, all bay mounted ordnances will be released. The bottom row of switches activates the bomb fusing mechanism for the entire ordnance carried. Switch 5 activates nose fusing and all the bombs are nose fused when the switch is in the down position. Switch 6 behaves exactly the same but for tail fusing. The entire panel is multi-purpose and can be used as a bomb, camera or tank selector. Today we're only interested in the bombs the panel is armed when the selector is in the down position. Also note, the Perspex cover cannot be closed whilst in this position. Of course, if you intend delivering bay mounted ordnance, you will have to open the bomb bay doors. To do this, depress the bomb door selector which will then return to the centre neutral position when the action is complete and the bomb door's warning light will illuminate. To drop your bombs you need to depress the bomb release button. Now that those steps have been completed we need to activate the reflector gun sight again with the switch on junction box B. Again, if you're flying in 2D, your viewpoint will change to a more centred position. Right, let's see how a bombing run turns out. Remember, you are going to want to apply a little nose down trim as you run in on the targets. And that concludes today's video, so I'll catch you all later.